Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're gonna talk more about making generative art inside of After Effects. All right, so this is what we're gonna be making. It's basically just one comp that's duplicated over a whole bunch of times. I'm playing off the idea that each one of these things is kind of like a core of a CPU or something, but you can use these things for like mass for displacement or just throwing over other stuff while you're doing a transition. It can just be something that adds a little bit of visual interest in between some of those things. So first let's take a look at that little thing I'm calling the graphic bit. This is sized way up so you guys can see it, but it's really that big. Let's bring that back up. I'm going to turn this controller off because we don't need to see that. Because I'm using Particle Playground and working with time on this thing, it's easier to set these longer than just like one frame. So this whole comp is like five seconds long. And it just jumps through each one of these things. They're just little elements. So we're basically going to take this bit comp and duplicate it a whole bunch of times in our pre-comps. So if we go in this random circuit comp here, you can see that this is basically the building block of one of these processors. So in here we have this particle playground layer, which is what shows all of this stuff. I'm going to turn that off. We have the bit here. And then under here I have some fractal noise. It's basically just some standard fractal noise, a little bit more contrast. So I'm going to turn that back off because we don't need to actually see it. And inside a particle playground, I've turned off the cannon. Particle radius here is zero, and particles per second is also zero. I'm using the grid, and I've keyframed particle radius right at the beginning to be one and then zero. That way we don't get a new one every frame and then just they stack up on top of each other. So then I have a layer map here, and this is set to use that graphic bit layer. And I have time offset type set to absolute so that it doesn't really animate. Because we're going to be taking care of that using our fractal noise layer. Then I'm going to close that up, and then down here in this persistent property mapper, we're using that third layer, that fractal noise, as our map. And I have it set to effects and masks because actually I have that fractal noise just in this comp. And then I'm just setting the red to be time offset and the minimum is zero and the maximum is five. That should be five seconds, so that's going to go through the whole range of our animation. And once we're done with that, we basically get this. So now instead of building this over and over and over again, I'm using a master property. So if we open up our essential graphics panel, you can see that I have random seed in here. And this actually corresponds to the random seed from the fractal noise layer. So I'm gonna close this panel down and then I'm gonna reset my workspace. So then if we go back into our original thing that I showed you guys, we can open this up, hit EE, see our expression. Let me open up expression S here real quick so you guys can actually see it. Make that big, click on this master property, pop that into here. I mean, look at how complicated this expression is. You guys are screwed. All right, so we have seed random set to index. And that's so that every one of these will be different. I'm setting timeless to true. Because the motion of these is actually handled with our fractal noise layer, we don't really need this to animate. So we just want each one to have just a different random seed, and that's it. And we're just getting a random number up to 1,000. And that's how this one's set up. And that's pretty simple, but you get a really good result. I've actually used this on a couple of different things for like little bits and stuff on this glitch pack I'm working on. So let's see one other way to do this. If you have form, this is the way I would probably go. Because in form, you can't really delay anything with time, at least as far as I know. I actually had to build the delay and the animation in this separately. So actually, that gives us kind of more of a digital look, and I kind of like that a little bit better. So as you can see, this one has kind of a delayed movement, and that's what gives it that digital quality. So let's open up one of these and see what the expression on this one looks like. It's a little bit different, a little bit more complicated, but I think you guys will manage. All right, the first line, we're setting up F, so that's going to be our frame number, equal to time divided by this comp dot frame duration. And then we have that seed random, and we're going to set our timeless again to true. And I've just realized that uh, we don't need this thousand in here, so that might actually be slowing us down a little bit. I accidentally left that in. So then we're going to do math.floor, and we're going to take that frame number and divide it by three. And what that basically does is prevent our number from changing until three frames have passed. Since we're flooring the number that we're dividing by three, we're only going to get a change on frame three, frame six, frame nine, because they're going to be one, two, and three. 1.1 is not going to change. You know, any of those kind of things in between aren't going to matter. So then we're going to take that value and multiply it by 10. And the reason why we're doing that is that form looks better when you change the number by 10 instead of by like 1. Because this would only be 1, 2, or 3. But if we're multiplying by 10, it'll be 10, 20, 30. And then all we're doing is tacking on a random number that's not changing. That's just to make sure that each one of these things is different. And that's all the expressions in this thing. The build for this form circuit is a little bit different. We don't have that fractal noise layer. All we have is our graphic bit in here. I have this thing still named particular for some reason, because initially I was going to use particular instead, but I didn't. So we just have a basic form set up. 
the size of this thing, even though the comp is 500, needs to be 450. And that's because the sizing is from the center of the elements as a whole, not from edge to edge of the comp. So the space is only 450 wide instead of 500. But we're going to have 10 particles in X and Y, one particle in Z. And then our particle is just going to be a textured polygon. And we're just going to select that layer under the texture here. I'm doing random still frame because again, we're going to change this random seed value in a master property. And if we click on here and we hit up, you can see how it changes if we go by 10. And you can see how it kind of just almost goes back and forth if we go by one for some reason. We'll set that back to one, even though it doesn't matter. That's in the master property, as I said before. So in this circuit one, that is the number that we're changing. And if you're wondering how I arrayed these out, I actually used one of our scripts called Stack It. I'll link that down below. But you can do this by hand. It's not that many layers. And that's it. It's pretty easy to generate something that's cool that you can use in a bunch of different ways. Anyway, if you guys have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I am Joe, and we'll see you next week. Bye.